Hello and welcome to the Mint Luxury Conference. We have here with us Pierre, ma a managing partner of Savigny Partners, a boutique mergers and acquisitions company advising luxury marketers world over. Prior to work, uh, finding this company, Pierre worked with uh, LVMH as the director of acquisitions. Welcome Pierre. As a boutique advisory firm to uh, luxury retailers world over, I was interested in understanding where does India come in terms of destinations for uh, luxury marketers world over, in terms of priority markets, where is India on that list? India is extremely high on the list of tomorrow. It's always but been over the, last, uh, over the last <laughs> 15 years that I've been involved in the luxury sector, incredible market tomorrow. And I think it's due to perhaps many factors, perhaps bureaucracy, perhaps taxes, perhaps lack of infrastructure. Uh, there's quite a few wealthy Indian consumers that, that purchase luxury goods outside of India, but as regards luxury brands into India, it's happening very slowly. Right. Yeah, we heard about that in the morning sessions today where uh, it's always been imported or bespoke, but uh, LVMH has been here for close to eight years, ten years, but we've not seen them opening beyond a handful of stores. Uh, in China, you know, they ramped up, it became one of their biggest markets outside of their own countries. So when, when is that tomorrow really? Do you think in your conversation with uh, international retailers, uh, they're still waiting on the sidelines for India or there's some kind of resignation and look at other markets now? What is happening? Sure, you always have to look at where to prioritize your investment and uh, uh, India is probably not quite ready for a big uh, avalanche of, of investment due to the regulatory environment. However, for the first time, I think in a long time, the, the, the signals made by this government and that are more pro-business, more pro foreign investment, have um, energized a number of, of companies, including multi-brand retailers and international retailers who are now looking into India. So they haven't yet necessarily invested, but they certainly have increased their level of of, uh, of attention to the Indian market. Yeah, in the morning today we did hear the not very encouraging views from the Minister of State. So, As regards multi multi brand <laughs> retailers, you're right. correct. And as far as single brand, hopefully there could be something there when, when it comes to the upcoming budget. Do you think that 30% sourcing uh, is a big constraint for uh, single brand retailers? Uh, y yes, I do. And I think that uh, if you're... Um, I mean, it's very rare that a brand can only rely on its own retail network. Only Louis Vuitton has that in the world. That's why it's still, despite being so big, so powerful and perceived as, as luxury, because you will never find a Vuitton product outside a Vuitton store. It's, it's really a powerful model. Most brands rely on a big uh, mixture of retail and, and wholesale. But wholesale needs multi-brand retailers. So, uh, if you're a luxury brand and you cannot do wholesale because there is no multi-brand retailer and you have on top of that constraints of where you have to source your, your products, it's going to just add difficulties to your, to your strategy in India. Uh, when, we, when you spoke about uh, you know, selling outside of your own stores, one of the biggest mediums, and you're doing a sale online for a brand, but in India, internet as a platform for sale is becoming very big. Do you see models like that in terms of luxury catching up where luxury marketers use the online medium to sell because e-commerce um, right now is uh, open to FDI and e-commerce e is allowed in the country and there is Amazon and there's a lot of international companies that are coming in through online. Do you see that as a channel for uh, luxury marketers to be used? Yes, of course. I mean, the, the digital channel is, is, is considerably more important than it, today than it was a few years ago for communicating the values of a brand and communicating to its customer base. That's one element. And then there is the selling a aspect. Uh, traditionally, luxury brands have, have, I mean traditionally, it's a recent tradition, but over the last few years, luxury brands have prioritized their own mono-branded channel as opposed to multi-brand channel because they want to be very careful about who sells their product and in which environment. And, and only a limited number of multi-brand retailers like net a -Porter, for example, have been successful because they offer a level of service and um, an engagement with the customer that luxury brands like. So luxury brands will not go on Amazon or eBay or such like that tomorrow morning and probably never, but uh, certainly the relative importance of digital in their channel is, is growing and we see that every year with every brand. Coming back, to, uh, coming back to India and niche luxury brands in India, 
uh, do you see an in interest in luxury marketers to acquire any niche brands in India to come here via the route of ac acquisition or invest in Indian brand? At the discussion upstairs, uh, we did speak uh, uh, about L Capital having a fund and investing in Fa Fab India or Estee Lauder picking up a stake in uh, Forest Essentials. But are there a lot many more such interesting cases that are coming up, where, whether it is for valuations, whether companies come to you and say, we are, we are interested in India, but we don't think uh, our current business, the brands that we sell here will work in India, so let's go to India with acquisition of a local brand there and develop that into luxury. Is there any such thought process or anything like that that's happening? It's difficult to develop a brand that is not luxury into luxury. It's a lot easier to take a brand down than it is to take a, a, a brand up. So buying into a brand and then turning it into luxury is just not something that's be ever being discussed. And I think that you're talk, talk, touching about two different things. Air capital, uh, when it comes to India, is, is a growth facilitator. They provide equity growth companies to capital to companies that, that require it in order to grow faster, but their aim is never to stay forever. They, they, they will exit. Accompany and then they, they exit with a, with, hopefully with a, with a profit. Lauder buying into Forest Essentials is a different case in point, and, and there you have you know, L'Oreal, Lauder, Nestle, etc. All the big companies are looking at the Indian market as a market with a large part of the world population, and they want to they wanna be there. So that will always happen. When it comes to premium brands or luxury brands, India has always been a source of subcontracting, a source of manufacturing, a source of of talent and a lot of people go to India for, for embroidery, for, for example. But when it comes to brand, there is a very important part of, of the storytelling that is lacking. And, and I'm not sure whether it's lack of confidence or, uh, or a uh, desire to look forward rather than look backwards into, into old brands. But certainly the, the, that aspect of, of the luxury sector has not been very prevalent in India. Right, and this is across. We're not just talking about corporates missing from the C, uh, large corporates like the Mittals or the Ambani's, uh, Reliance or Aditya Billa. It's not them. It's across the country. You're saying we do not have yet developed a very large niche luxury brand which is known for its Indian heritage, whether it is using embroidery or textile. It's correct, but also it's a, it's it's a question of, of of infrastructure. It's a question of you know if there were a better infrastructure, if there were existing multi-brand retailers that were selling premium brands or luxury, or luxury brands, then you would have the domestic market to justify investing in a, in a local brand. Today, it's just simply, simply not the case.